The Bloons Tower Defense games are some of my favorite Flash games of all time. I've spent many hours playing these along with many other Flash games throughout high school in the computer lab and just kind of when I was bored at home. Now you might already know this, but by the end of the year, many modern web browsers are going to be removing the Adobe Flash Player. So these games are not going to be as accessible as they are today. And so as a tribute to some of these older Flash games that I just adored so much, not only do I think it would be really fun to actually recreate some of these in the Unity game engine, but it's also gonna give me a good opportunity to talk about some kind of higher level game architecture in small bite-sized chunks. Now, just because a game seems simple on the surface doesn't mean that there's not a whole lot going on under the hood. And I think this is going to be a really good opportunity for me to kind of display some of these, you know, really important concepts of game development with some really simple and easy to digest examples. And I think you're gonna see a lot of this kind of, you know, complexity in a simple game when I talk about the first game that I'm going to be recreating, which of course is Bloons Tower Defense. Also, I think that due to the simple nature of these games, they'd translate over to something like Project Tiny extremely well. Now, I'm not gonna be doing this for the Bloons Tower Defense, but maybe the game after that, I'll try and implement it using Project Tiny. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on that video. Oh, and by the way, if you are working on any exciting new projects during the month of September 2020, do have a special little surprise for you. So I've actually partnered with Unity for their back to school promotion. And if you enter the code TURBO15 at checkout, that'll get you 15% off your entire purchase. Uh, so feel free to go check out the description. I've got the full kind of terms and conditions down there, but it definitely is a great way that you can save a little bit of money on some things that can spice up your new projects. All right, so back to Bloons Tower Defense. So one of the things that I always tell people starting out in game development is to pick a classic like arcade game or flash game, just something like extremely simple that you can basically recreate from front to back, you know, as accurately and as close to the original as possible. I think this is a really good exercise because it teaches young developers a lot about the kind of logic and all the considerations to make as you wanna start making bigger and bigger projects. And this is something that I've done a number of times in the past, but it's been kind of a while since I've done it. And I, I've definitely grown a whole lot as a programmer since probably the last time that I've done one of these. So I do think that it's about time for me to implement this exercise again and really just focus on making the best possible final product that's as close to the original as possible. So one thing that I'm gonna be really focusing on as far as programming goes is just making the cleanest code possible. Lately, I've been interested in looking for different ways that I can make my code much more readable and more extensible and just putting it into place really good programming practices. So I do wanna implement this kind of in like a full project. And then when I do that, I can kind of demonstrate how important it is to have clean code. Also, I really want this code to be extensible. So if I want to go in, add in new features or bring the game to different platforms, I can easily do that. And as I focus on things like making it extensible and you know implementing really clean code, I think that's gonna bring up a lot of interesting topics like different design patterns, as well as just kind of like best practices for programming in general. So of course I'm gonna be sharing those with you along the way. And another reason that I want to implement these good clean programming practices is because I want this project to serve as kind of like a centerpiece for my portfolio. If you saw the video that I did a few weeks back where I talked about goals and aspirations, I mentioned that one of the things that I wanted to do more of is contracted work. I want to use this project as basically a way where I can kind of demonstrate my skills and show off that I know what I'm doing. By the way, if you are interested in any contracted work, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to kind of talk about what I can do for your project. And so I think this project is going to give me a good opportunity where I can, again, demonstrate a lot of that clean code and really just show how you know extensible it is and how easy it would be for some artists and designers to go in and add more content to the game uh, with some of the game development tools that I do plan on creating for this game. Again, I'm really just going all out on this simple Flash game and I'm gonna have a ton of fun with it. I think I'm gonna learn a lot along the way and it's really going to be worth it. So real quickly, I just wanna talk about some of the reasons that I am choosing to recreate the Bloons Tower Defense game. For one, even though it's a simple game, there's a lot of complexity under the hood that's really going to force me to you know, separate my code out and really work on some of these clean code principles and design patterns. And I'm actually gonna show you how complex this game really is in just a moment here. And as I was kind of planning everything out for the content that I needed to create this 
for this game, uh, one thing that I noticed is many things kind of work the same, but there's a lot of kind of like one-off outliers. So I can't really cheat and just kind of like hard code everything and then they all basically have the same properties because not everything does have the same properties. You know, there's a lot of things that are very similar, but then there's one thing that's wildly different. So that's gonna force me to like kind of separate out a bunch of these different portions of code. And then so everything can kind of be more or less interchangeable. And then I can just apply these certain properties to you know each thing in the game that needs it. So anyways, I do wanna show off kind of my planning phase for this game. Basically, I've just created all the content that I need to make in this game. If you're making a completely new from scratch game, you definitely do not wanna get as granular and as detailed as I am right now, because throughout the development process, you're gonna find out that a lot of things are going to change. However, because I'm recreating a game, I wanted to be as exact to the original as possible. So I, I took extremely detailed and meticulous notes on everything in the game. So I've basically just documented all this in one of my favorite tools, which is Notion. Uh, so down here, I just kind of have like a, a little Trello board type thing that's going to have, you know, all the current tasks. Of course, I haven't started working on this yet, um, but I have kind of documented out the content that I need in the game. So here's kind of like the pre-game content. So this is basically, you know, just kind of showing the splash screen and the title screen and the main menu screen. So then also I have the user interface here and you'll see that I kind of just start off with talking about the uh, you know general kind of user interface about you know some of the main options here and then we go to the main panel and then I talk about you know different things that happen when you know you hover these different icons you know what's being displayed on the screen and then when you're like you know going to place a tower what happens when you uh, can put it on a valid position or an invalid position. And then again, you'll see that I've just taken, you know, pretty meticulous notes and screenshots on just, you know, all the little things that are in the game, game over screens, you win screens, everything. So here's kind of the stats page. And I've basically just made this kind of like matrix, which talks about the different towers, how much they cost, how much you sell them for. Um, how much they're sold for when they have like different upgrades. And then down here, I have some of the stats on the different balloons. So next up, I have documented the gameplay rules. So this is basically, you know, everything that happens in the game. This is kind of like the main gameplay programming loop here. And then so here I've listed out some of the effects. So I have visual effects for, you know, all the different towers, the weapons, the balloons. And then I also have some sound effects that are going to be needed as well. And then here are just kind of some ideas for some custom tools that I wanted to create. Again, this is just going to make it much more easier for the game to be extended. If I want to add, you know, more levels later on, it's going to be really easy to do that. I will leave a link to all this in the description so you can kind of go click through this yourself and really see how complex Bloons really is. You know, even though it seems like a simple game on the surface, you know, as you click through this, you can, you can kind of realize that there's a surprising amount of complexity and, you know, you can't just kind of cheat and hard code everything because that would be, you know, extremely, extremely annoying. So you do really have to think about, you know, doing good, clean game development architecture. So anyways, I think that's going to wrap up today's video. I really do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel to see lots more videos in this series, as well as some future videos where maybe I'm going to be recreating some Flash games in Project Tiny. Of course, if you do have any questions or suggestions for future videos, or maybe any other Flash games that you might want to see recreated, you can leave all that down in the comments section below. Anyways, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.